Hi, I am Rohan Poddar. I am the chief storyteller and managing partner at Rohan Poddar Creative Media LLP. And today I bring to you the fourth episode of the brand storytelling dialogue. Today we are discussing about what does it mean to humanize a brand. And to discuss this, I have assembled a panel of three speakers from different industry sectors. Let me introduce them to you. Subhashini Rajaram, she is an accomplished corporate affairs and communications professional with 14 plus years of experience in handling high level relationships with media, government, academia and other stakeholders. In developing and executing all aspects of public outreach campaigns, she has managed corporate affairs function for large consumer brands like Huawei, Leeco, Skyworth, Mobile Premier League, etc. Amit is an integrated marketing communications professional with over 18 years of experience in advertising, media sales, industrial retail, and media relations. He's extremely focused and result oriented. A decisive leader with proven success in designing, developing, and deploying corporate communications solutions. Tina, Tina helps organizations overcome barriers to adapt and integrate DEI holistically. With more than two decades of experience, she helps design and execute DEI programs and initiatives in the workplace while advocating for intentional inclusion. Her aim is to support organizations and teams build a culture of inclusion and belonging where everyone can thrive and grow. So having made these introductions, uh, let me get to, let me begin with this webinar. And uh, let me take my first question here. I take my first question to uh, Tina. Uh, to humanize a brand means that the brands need to re-examine their relationships with people. And one of the most important sets of people are your employees, both current as well as potential. Uh, now, Tina, you are a DEI uh, leader and uh, you have a very crucial role in showing the human face of your employer brand. What are some of your biggest learnings in this context? Uh, thanks so much, Rohan, uh, for having me here. I'm really uh, looking forward to this conversation. Um, so I have spent close to four to five years in employer brand marketing and led that effort in India um, for ThoughtWorks um, as part of my career, right? And so this this is a topic that's very close to my heart. And I do believe that, you know, authentic narratives and storytelling is very, very critical when you are looking at, um, you know, at, at um, employer brand marketing. And uh, that hasn't changed at all. I mean, we talk about, okay, social media or a lot of things has, has changed and that has influenced us to look at brands differently. But I don't think that narrative has really changed for the uh, you know past few decades. Um, your employees are your brand ambassadors. That's the reality. And so the stories that they tell needs to, uh, their experiences, how they look at inclusion within an organization, how, they, how do they look at their workplace? How do they look at um, you know their experiences as something that is very critical when it comes to corporate uh, brand storytelling, right? And um, and today organizations care deeply about diversity and acknowledge the value it adds uh, with, with innovation, enhancing organizational culture, retention, overall business success. In fact, um, if you talk to candidates who are applying to any organization, one of the things that they usually do is go to Glassdoor and check out what uh, you know, the current employees or uh, the alumni is talking about the organization. And um, and right now, Glassdoor also has a DI as a diversity and inclusion rating that's there uh, that you can, you know, rate, rate an organization. And so this becomes very, very imp and, uh, important. Also, what have been the experiences of people who are in your pipeline, right? When you are recruiting, what has been the experiences of people, even the people who haven't joined your organization, um, I think becomes very, very critical in your brand narrative. Um, you know, there is uh, this Wix ad that featured this uh, uh, the transgender activist, um, um, Gauri Savan, um, and, uh, and, you know, just throws a light on how 
uh, the LGBTQI community is treated in India. Uh, similarly, right, in the corporate world or the corporate setup, um, there are so many programs and you really need to understand the pulse of who you're targeting. We have a program called uh, Vapsi. It's a women in tech returnee program, right? It's for women who've taken a break from tech and want to get back to tech. You know, typically, if you see a lot of these women are not you know, confident to get back to tech because of the ever-changing nature of the tech industry um, and the landscape of the work itself. And so the story had to come from people who've had similar experiences. And so when we internally spoke to people who've been part of the Vapasi program, we heard their narrative, their storytelling, that became the pulse of, of uh, you know, our entire campaign to attract more women uh, who've taken a break. And it's been extremely successful in helping us attract women who've taken a break and want to come back. Similarly, we have a program uh, called Interning with Pride for folks from the LGBTQ plus community. And that's the same narrative, right? Now, you may not be comfortable coming in front of the camera. You may not be comfortable sharing your lived experiences, but you will be you will be comfortable sharing that probably internally with a smaller set of people. And that storytelling becomes the pulse of, of what you would like to share externally to attract the right people. And I think those are some of the examples that I have. Right, right. And I think uh, those are some of the fantastic ways of how uh, corporations can begin to start humanizing themselves and be inclusive. Yeah. My next question is to Amit. Uh, Amit, you've spent a majority mm -hmm. of your career as a communications professional in manufacturing sector. Now, I dare say that brands in this sector are perceived to be very conservative in their nature, or let's say old school industrial, um, for the lack of better word, in how they present themselves, um, how they show up, uh, what they say, how they behave, etc. Do you think these brands in manufacturing sector and allied sectors, which are typically old school, considered to be old school, need to humanize themselves and be better connected with their customers? Or do you think otherwise? Yeah, thanks, uh, Rohan, for having me on your show. Uh, am I clear, loud and clear and visible? Yes, you are. Thank you. So um, uh, thanks, and I appreciate the fact that you have clearly mentioned about uh, manufacturing, uh, which was old school, uh, manufacturing, which needed uh, kind of new attention. Uh, I'm happy to say that uh, this is one sector uh, which has been uh, working on this uh, for a long time. Uh, and uh, it's just that because manufacturing is behind the scene, uh, not many people uh, have been talking about it or been visible to them. I would say that way. Uh, it was also because organizations by themselves uh, probably did not understand the value of the humanizing or rather communicating what they were doing to be humanizing. And I think this all changed with the connected ecosystem and the connected world that we are living in today. Because at the end of the day, everybody and everyone is talking about where you work for, what you do how humane is your organization and a better word to use is how authentic do you communicate and we as communicators i think uh, it's our task in hand to uh, be as authentic as possible with all stakeholders uh, employees definitely being a large part and a large part of it is already been by tina but there are other parts of it like how do you talk to your customers when you humanize your brand uh, how do you talk to your own uh, external stakeholders under the corporate social responsibility when you humanize that? And you yourself have been doing a large work in corporate social responsibility answering, showcasing stories. So I think the core of the matter here is how authentic as a brand you want to be and what you want to communicate and where you stay in the entire ecosystem. And this is, I think, changing across the manufacturing sectors today, because I think uh, in, in India, when you talk about greater economic indices, uh, manufacturing sector has a very fair share to play in this. And there is a large amount of people who work into the manufacturing sector. I would say we are also one of the largest recruiters. Yeah. So it's more than important for us to be humanized. 
a lot of manufacturing companies are working in this direction the particular sector that probably i work in cement yeah emotion if you see by itself plays a large role a house by itself is an emotion and it's something that you humanize completely yeah we all say houses made of people that they live in at what more can you humanize than than a cement sector that possibly that you would be looking out for so i think all of us work deeply into this direction we stay as authentic as possible we do the best of storytelling that we could stay both inside out and outside in and uh, being largest employers also contributing to gdps uh, it's important for us to stay that way and to go ahead in this connected world right right and in fact uh, as you rightly said manufacturing sector uh, has the highest uh, uh, contribution to the economy and hence employs large number of people and that's where it's particularly a onus on them to really humanize themselves um, yes i want to come to uh, uh, suhash subhashini uh, subhashini i have seen some of your uh, uh, you are a di- director at for communications at uh, country delight and who who has not you know no, there's nobody who's missed the country delight ads right they are so earthy they don't feature celebrities or they don't have a big bang kind of a ad production um and in the people who have used in these ads could very well be my next door neighbors right uh what is the thought behind such kind of uh, content thanks rohan thanks for giving this opportunity and i'm glad to be part of the panel discussion and the topic that is pretty much you know uh, close to my heart right uh, when when i saw the topic on humanizing brands i thought uh, we must be one of them to definitely talk about and you as you rightly said you know the uh, it was pretty simple for counter delight because one uh, they had disrupted the business model in terms of bringing in the farm to fresh Uh, you know from from fresh to home kind of uh, you know products that they have already disrupted in their products they are pretty much genuine honest and unadulterated and that's the motto that the brand carries and in the marketing side too it was very essential that the messaging had to be crisp messaging had to be sharp and it had to be more than ever relatable right uh, when i talk about uh, humanizing brands i also believe a relatable ad is something which is doing pretty much pretty much good uh, to my target audience uh, my my target audience are pretty hyper local right like for country delight it is a hyper local market that we targeting on and it it wouldn't uh, be a better ambassador or a better celebrity than its own consumers talking about how good the product is or how uh, how they benefit right so um, uh, versus uh, a, a decade ago we were trying to uh, get in a star or get trying to get in somebody uh, as big as Uh, you can imagine and then they vouch for it rather when the consumer who's experienced it and then is talking about it it's it's, it's like sharing your own experience and that word of mouth and that kind of um you know authenticity like amit rightly put is is uh, is unparalleled right like you can't uh, sort of uh, compare it with any anything else so that with that in mind we thought uh, you know we had gathered a, a sizable number of uh, catering to about 4 lakh households in the country and we do about 8 million deliveries in a day so that itself speaks the volume in which country delight is working and it's all through uh, you know our own consumer uh, testimonies that they are you know uh, uh, talking about it in their own channels and we do not go um uh, you know uh, really big bang on uh, uh, talking ex- extravagant about the product because the products themselves stand for it themselves and the consumers who are using it uh, sort of talk about it right so that's the authenticity completely in our uh, communication that we wanted to bring forth and that was the idea that we uh, brought into table and it pretty much is doing well and i'm glad that most of them have uh, uh, you know seen our work and seen our efforts yeah right and actually um that's actually a distinguishing feature of country delight right uh, the ads that we see uh, and uh, so before i move on to the next segment uh, i just uh, request to audience to uh, send their questions in the chat and we'll take up these questions up to the end of this webinar right uh, so moving on um in the second section i want to talk about storytelling storytelling is a very human trait uh we've been doing this for thousands of years 
and when ba- uh, brands tell stories they make themselves human and essentially that makes them relatable right now these stories could be about your corporate brand employer brand product brand or even your social brand i want to get each of your perspectives on storytelling that humanizes your brand and what your what's your view on it how you think you want to adapt it and use it for your own organization going forward you could we could begin with anybody anybody can take this up i'll, I'll probably take it uh, you know uh, like i was also discussing with you uh, you know uh, the fact that you know comparatively the market is pretty much cluttered for brands to talk about and there are so much of content that target audience today is consuming and to uh, you know uh, uh, retain it or to even recall that memory is pretty much challenging for a marketer and a communicator today uh, earlier it was about 30 second ads and that was discussed in either good bad or neutral that was a discussion and it was to one particular you know mode of or a media or a platform but today there are multiple channels multiple platforms and to design and to talk differently in each of these platforms and yet get registered among the clutter is, is a challenge for the marketers and uh, unless until and unless you are either connecting to your target audience or you are relating your ads to them or there is something up personal for the uh, you know audience it just gets scrolled up down right that that's what's going to happen so uh, differentiating your storytelling you know uh, and understanding the consumer pulse is the key uh, to the to the business that you would be doing um, uh, i mean you could you could spend x x amount in marketing but are you getting that kind of, kind of roi uh, which was not being thought of uh, at least in the current bubble but yes there is slow move towards thinking of whether this particular activity that i'm doing is an roi uh, you know driven or is it is it really working out in the way that i want is the consumer pulse being touched as the right target audience being met these are the kind of questions the brands have started to think and started using um, the platforms also uh, in a, in a very wise manner i would feel and having said that yeah um, uh, storytelling in a different way like you would have i mean you said you, you you've seen multiple ads but you still recall a country delight because there was some earthiness to it some uh, you know um, be local kind of you know a message that we are at the end of it each local you know these are the things uh, more than ever realism is in play a lot in every sector now be it entertainment be it brands be it advertisements people are looking for real things and realism is something which we are talking living and eating now more than ever i guess so yeah that sort of uh, um, worked we could uh, tap that particular uh, you know emotion of the consumer and i sort of work with for us i guess right right yeah tina or amit if you have any perspective please feel free to share on that um um way back in 2014 we hired our first trans woman um you know naina is very well known tedx speaker and um, we wanted to go on our lgbtq plus inclusion journey which means that um we wanted existing employees who belong to the community to come out we wanted to be feel safe to come out but at the at the same time we wanted to be able to attract talent from the from the queer community and nayana's approach was sharing their story right she she was sharing her story she was going from office to office just sharing it builds strong allyship and i think in a way when when brands you know share authentic stories it brings back it builds brand recall but it also bring builds um familiarity it builds a sense of commitment um to the brand and so if, what has happened is over the years we've seen as an inclusive organization for the queer community um and um, you know we've been able to attract talent from the community as well um i had recently shared right on linkedin as well about unicef doing um you know a study on indian ads and uh, how um you know uh, it's very very important for us to reinforce the right uh you know storytelling the realistic positive role models uh but one study of by unicef of our ads sort of reinforce the gender bias and stereotypes are something that's there and and it's huge in the indian ad world and um, and so how do we challenge this how can we stop misrepresentation and harmful stereotypes of women in advertising um i think that becomes very very critical um 
the concept of i think uh, shubhashini just touched upon this a little bit as well but um, you know the concept of design thinking um, where you look at you know your user needs what what do they want what are they asking for what are they thinking um, you know think and being able to ideate your uh, you know your uh, your ideas in terms of how you want to sell your brand with that particular sector i think becomes very important years back we did a campaign called talk tech to her because women in tech is a very important uh, target or you know uh, target for us and uh, and from a retention standpoint as well and when we spoke to women who been part of thoughtworks who also quit thoughtworks and left and we asked them hey what attracted you to our organization uh, what are some of the aspects that you think are unique about the organization what are some of the challenges that you faced and building the story narrative based on this and being able to be you know honest about what you're saying i think becomes very very critical in 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 that storytelling and um, and it also in a way right it also tells you what to expect um and so that is the reason why you can't say the wrong things or you can't put a false picture out there and then have a different experience for people internally and so i think that authenticity and that truth telling is important right right amit you have anything to say before i move on yeah just a couple of points see uh, uh, see what it says you know good uh, so so i've i've heard this many times and i i also believe in it says that uh, good stories are timeless yeah and second quote that i've heard is you know internet never forgets yeah so if you uh, can combine the two today you come to a point where you say timeless stories are never forgotten that's what you know i i put it and so are timeless structures yeah as a company which we are in cement create structures which have to stand the test of time and these structures slowly become part of all the stories that we also try to create so i think for us as a company storytelling is an important thing for newoco that we would do our structures will tell us the story our structures will stand the test of time and our structures will embody emotions of those who will experience these structures and this is how i think where my storytelling approach you know would possibly go into so just to summarize i think we need to be authentic we need to be timeless i remember now uh, i think few months back one video of a old fridge had gone viral some 1956 fridge which people were demonstrating everywhere over internet yeah and it was just a product demonstration but it was timeless because it was the most effortless refrigerator that everybody saw so good stories have to be effortless they have to be timeless and nobody will ever forget that, that right and in fact uh, i couldn't have agreed more with you on this as a story as a storyteller myself this is what i actually tell a lot of my clients when i speak to them that if you're looking at creating a story look at it as making try and make it timeless not contextual of course there is content that is contextual for the times but timeless stories stay in your minds uh, like for example um, you had this cadbury's ad in 1992 kuch khas hai zindagi mein kuch baat hai zindagi mein now they have done a new version of that in 2021 i guess where they have swapped the roles so the, the guy is sitting in the uh, audience and the girl is playing cricket so that's a timeless story if you will uh, now moving on to the third segment uh, when we are talking about humanizing a brand uh, one thing that has to be addressed in my view is the generation z or z as some may I like to call it now generation z comprises 27% of indian population that means they are involved wherever you go you are looking to employ people uh, generation z matters there are a lot of youngsters there you are looking to talk to people to your consumers a large part of them are youngsters generation z so uh, and it's it's a kind of a target segment that's important to in fact all of you in your own respective way so for example it's important for tina to make sure that generation z feel that it's an open culture for example open minded culture in a company it may be uh, particularly for you amit where you are a cement company but if you want to attract talent from in generation z or 
get them on board for your company that might be that might require you to reach out to them in a certain way uh, so this question actually again is for all three of you and maybe i could start it with uh, amit uh, for a brand like yours which is cement uh, manufacturing uh, do you think uh, you need to try harder or try different in a more different way to communicate to generation z yeah this is a very good question because cement as a business is you know an us to one of the old economy businesses about and there is nothing getting it the most of area which are you know uh, very rural uh, and on the other side of it if you also see it is one business that is helping us to humanize and create uh, you know assets and stories for a long time and i think this is something which today generation uh, has to understand uh this percent of the generation we can proudly say that you know they are highly informed uh, they have lots of uh, tools by which they can extract information tina spoke about glassdoor twashin spoke about content platforms yeah and they are highly informed uh, they are well decision makers at that point of time and they are uh, sometimes also very opinionated about what they have to do so the idea here is to make them understand what the values of a particular brand stand for and do these generation resonate with the values that an organization would stand for in the future once you try to resonate with these values for a long term i believe here you are trying to make a bond which will help you uh, to authentically uh, be part of the organization and give the best in terms of what uh, one can do it is also an platform which will help you to engage with them uh, and foster future in a better way because at the end of the day what we are today we are going to evolve with them as they will envisage what the future has to be yeah and so the business also will evolve so if i have to connect the dots with what we are today and what we are with the future uh, it is something which we have to stick on to our values of the core brand try to be as authentic with them try to communicate with them constantly to inform what things we are doing overall and that's the key i think communication as a team here Uh, stands at the fulcrum of what we have to do, and uh, evolve with them as we go. So it's more of a evolution. It's not going to be a one-day change. It has to evolve with time. It has to go ahead with time, as I can see. Right, right. Uh, Tina, now you being the DEI leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sorry, am I audible? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so Tina, you are a DEI leader, uh, and uh, when talent managers from your organization recruit is this at the back of their minds uh, in terms of because the workforce dynamics have changed over the last 15 years and you see a majority of generation z people uh, uh, youngsters in the uh, in the recruitment pool so to speak uh, does it affect your communication does it affect your policy making absolutely i think um, you know whether it is policies whether it is people practices your uh, hiring practices the way you advertise your brand i think a uh, gen z has a huge influence um, on on your messaging right i have two gen z years at home and i definitely know the way they look at the workplace is very very different um, uh, you know um, uh, like for example uh, you know that connect with the workplace so feeling that i want to get up and work go to work feeling excited about the workplace then just you know a place to go and make money or uh, you know that of course it comes with a certain type of privilege as well but um but gen zers want to move from the workplace than ever before and i think the pandemic has also influenced quite a bit the way gen zers look at the workplace today and the type of expectations that they have from the workplace um in fact a study uh, says that 87 uh, percentage of gen zers agree that the media and advertising has a responsibility to be inclusive in its representation of diverse and minority identities and i think that is so so very critical today 
um, uh, you know, being digital natives, the way they look at advertising, the way they look at storytelling, they want to see more diversity. They want to see more representation. And, 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 and we all have to accept that, that this generation, especially of the younger folks are a lot more inclusive than the past few generations uh, that we've had. And so that narrative in your storytelling becomes very, very important. Um, I also think that, uh, and, and this is in fact, I mean, it's not a, even a recent research. This research was done quite some time back, but that younger millennials look for values and look for brands that are purpose-driven, um, right? And and uh, it's the same with Gen Zers as well. So that's something in our narrative, can we look at, um, you know, uh, a storytelling where we talk about what is the purpose of, of, our, of our brand? of our organization, of the product that we're building, anything that it that ties into some effect in terms of sustainability, in terms of uh, impact to the society, in terms of impact to the people around you, I think that narrative becomes very, very important. Um, and and they do a lot more research, right? Like if, if, if today, I don't, I don't remember going to, you know, Glassdoor and checking out a company before joining. And I didn't, and probably, at that time, I didn't have that access. But today, they will go. They will check out. They will, you know, check with their friends. They will check in their Insta networks, and so and they will check what their what the experiences are. Rather, they will check policies. They will check what what the brand is telling on their website. What type of work they will get to do. All of that. And and I and I think those aspects are things that um, you know organizations need to keep in mind, um, and it becomes very very critical in your brand uh, narrative. Right, right. Uh, Subhashini, for you, when you chose this path of uh, content creation, which is storytelling uh, approach, was the was a Generation Z calculus in your mind, or uh, was that an afterthought? How did that work? Uh, that that definitely was, you know, given that the fact that the entire Gen Z you're talking about is only virtually available, and we had to always think of how the convenience commerce can happen to them, if not quick commerce, I'm talking convenience commerce here, uh, where we had to think how could uh, we merge the values that the you know that the uh, country or the, that that the land had in terms of consumption and uh, talking about how those which we had is definitely something which which we should carry forward and cherish and the most difficult part was basically to change some habitual behavior right like change the habits that the consumers have the choices that they made these were the challenges that we had to and to change these are the most difficult and the and the crucial uh, you know part of our uh, strategy um, you know, uh, and and leave better as as the mantra of the brand is something which we wanted to uh, sort of uh, you know carry it forward and talk about it and etc. But that was so hard to do. And with Gen Z explaining the values that you carry and then also technologically making it available at your doorstep is some combination that we've worked together and that sort of definitely clicked because if you are talking uh, natural, if you're talking organic, it is always with the perception that comes at the price or availability or access to it is, is a challenge always. But breaking all of these issues or breaking all of these challenges and bringing in a viable solution is something which Country Delight is cracked, if I could uh, rightly put forth. And uh, uh, keeping in mind the um, uh, younger generation, the Gen Z generation of uh, ordering everything possible today, sitting at the homes and the pandemic also teaching uh, one or two uh, lessons to us on how you should supposed to keep yourself fit and healthy and consume right. You know, that's something which was very, very uh, essential and the uh, pandemic definitely had given a boost. Uh, more than ever, I think uh, ages across have uh, now woken up to the fact that Choosing right is something which is in your own hands, right? So that access is what we've created now. Choosing right is in your hands. So definitely, uh, that's something which we have been constantly working on and will continue to work on too. Right, right. And that clarifies a lot. Uh, all right. I think uh, we have time for a few questions. Um, let me uh, move on to the question answer segment. Uh, OK. Uh, so this question, it seems like it could be for Tina. It, this question is from Rajiv Velur. Uh, he says that diversity, diversity always had meant that it would be a female. 
how do we become really inclusive with dei in hiring ads without offending genders is the question um dei is not about uh, gender alone and gender is a spectrum so it includes people from the lgbtqia community as well um rajiv to your point i think um uh, i'm going to say it as simply as possible and of course it's it's much more complex than um i think being not stereotyping certain characters based on role um or a gender or a religion right um i think when we show homemakers for example of course uh, um uh, you know things have changed today but when we show homemakers it's always women or when we show that someone's in the kitchen someone's washing clothes someone's uh, you know teaching the kids so there is there is data as well about this and there are multiple studies about this but constantly showing women and i know that you know mostly women pay, play the caregiver roles but the narrative is changing and showing the change narrative could influence more people positively could make you know uh, for example you know any chores at home to be a shared responsibility which will bring more women to the workforce which impacts the gdp of the of the country so it's also related in how successful we are as a nation as well and so um i think that that matters uh, i think non gender specific language right a lot of times uh, we use very gender specific language and and being non gender specific is something and acknowledging inter- intersectionality all of us have multiple identities we just don't have i can't you could you can't look at me and say hey that is that's a woman i am a mother i i am a dei strategist i i have multiple identities to me and so um just looking at me with that one lens without looking at me as someone who has multiple identities i think and showing that flavor i think is important when it comes to brand storytelling yeah all right uh this question is from uh, rajiv pradhan from the audience and uh, he says uh, does the exercise of return of brands tangible slash a uh, slash non tangible carried out periodically and how it is done so that's what he's saying return of brands is the term he has used could be for some mm-hmm. yeah uh, amit or subhash any of you can take this no if i've got the question right uh return on the grants okay okay so if i've got the question right but is it tangible not tangible again everything that we as marketers do can be measured um, it it is a straight no if i could say because it is not because there are certain um content that we pure play for the awareness sake which will not be tangible there are certain storytelling that we do for uh you know for for sharing the story behind the brand for sharing the story behind the individual that is uh, you know doing uh, with the, the with the thought process that he has so there are certain things which are measurable certain things which are not um periodicity is something which we again cannot draw a particular line saying this is the period that we measure a particular content whether this is giving us value whether but yeah they definitely over a period of time once to and see for, for country delight we've been doing a lot of digital campaigns alone right so it it is easier and today it is more easier to measure whether one one thing is working one thing is not working but whether uh, in in a tangible measure whether this is giving me ill this is not giving me ill precisely may be very difficult but comparatively yes the measurement levels or the way we even for communicators even for pr whether this particular strategy of for working not working is something which you could easily figure out uh, in in some sense uh, may not be measurable but in some sense definitely we could correct ourselves over the um, you know course of time definitely yes yeah if that's that's the question and i answered right yeah me oh yeah i think so okay so let me take uh, the next question yeah i'll add one or two things to it rohan uh, yeah sure sure go ahead yeah, so, uh, thanks uh, for the perspective on the return of brands uh, while uh, you know swachan is for a lot about uh, uh, you know the measuring and i think digital world gives us a scope to measure data to Uh, return on brands is actually a very vast term yeah for example if you bring in your employees also into the account 
and the way you have your employee stickiness to the organization also that is also a brand that they are talking about so if there is an any kind of communication that you are doing where you know an attrition rate in an organization has gone down and the quality of work or if there are new people who are also joining and becoming part of the fraternity and that is also a return that you have to calculate in today's world because we are living in a connected ecosystem we cannot just uh, measure return on a brand in terms of its sales Uh, effectiveness and the revenues today. There are a lot of uh, intangible assets also that are playing a key role in demonstrating what return it could give to us. So, right, right. Thanks, Omit, for that. Uh, I'll take the last question uh, here. Uh, this question is from Anupam Kumar, and he says, "What medium of communication works best?" to tell your potential customers the true value of the brand or the reason for its existence so he is asking what's the best medium of communication to tell your brand value mute off yeah one thing uh, i would like to just put in over here is uh, you know uh, today i think we are living in the times of uh, story so definitely uh, storytelling is a medium audio visual is definitely is something that people are getting exposed more and more uh, purpose driven audio visual communication i would say is something which will help us to give authentic stories and thereby uh, tell people how everlasting the brand can be and create stories that will start for a long time yeah so this is in a nutshell that i have to say on this sure sure uh i think uh, we've come to the end of this webinar i'm afraid we've run out of time but i really would want to thank uh, sincerely thank all my panelists as well as audience for coming here out uh, today on a friday afternoon and engaging in a discussion uh, thanks again and have a great day and a great weekend and i will see you next time with another uh, webinar thanks all for joining have a good afternoon